Okay, great. And then how many brick and mortar stores? Do we have any brick and mortar stores? Wow. <laughs> One brick and mortar store. Okay, great. What do you sell? Sorry? What do you sell? Oh, no? And then, um, do you find you get a lot of traffic? Uh, from the store? No. Okay. Um, you need to research your market. Uh, who are you trying to reach? You need to think about that from the very beginning. You know, are you looking for CEOs? Are you looking for uh, a mom who works at home and, and needs to buy stuff for kids online? You know, who are you trying to reach? Is your reach local, regional, or national? Um, that's really important to know about your business. You need to think about that. Um, you can have mixtures of, of all. Uh, we have companies that we work with at Phase One that have huge local business, but they've uh, pushed nationally, and now they actually have more national business than they have local business. Um, so you can look at it, you know, in two different ways. Um, you need to look at your market and how do they find their products and services? Do the people that you're talking Okay, um, what category are they in? They're probably under pest control, but they might be under exterminator, but they might be under lawn care because my pests are grubs that are eating at my lawn. So which area would you be under? And so you basically, what your job was, was to kind of figure out how things were organized and learn other people's systems. In other words, you were looking about the order, you need to figure out how um, books were organized, you learn a card catalog system, they have categories like you know Afro pop music or jazz or um, any of those numbers of things. You gotta learn all those different things because they out there were organizing things and you had to fit your thinking patterns into the larger system. That's how things used to work. Now we're in a new school search, and in this environment, we're really more Alphabetical order is obsolete. It's more about whatever is important to you at this time and the different kind of relationship that you have with that. So you might have grubs eating at your lawn. You're thinking lawn care. You're not thinking pest control. And even the word pest is kind of a big, broad term. You might have rodents. You might have roaches. You might have this is illustrated here. It might be hard to see on, the, on this particular slide. But it's more about associations and about how you think. So again, getting back to the idea, when you do your keyword research, you really want to think from the outside in. You want to think about how your clients and your prospects are thinking and not on the inside. An example of this, um, if you were an airline trying to get people to come to your website to buy tickets, and you might think low fare might be a really good term. Well, who doesn't want to pay a low price? That's really an internal term. How many people flew into Austin today? Nobody. Awesome. Oh, well, maybe one person. <laughs> um, did you look up low fare? Did you look up cheap flights? If either, right? You probably looked up cheap flights because you're thinking in that frame of mind. So from an external perspective, looking at what your customers are thinking and the terminology that they use, you, that's going to make a big difference in the amount of people that you're going to be able to touch and in the, in the audience that you're going to be able to reach. The other side of this is when you're able to get these keywords, you're going to be able to turn this around into lots of different areas. One of the most powerful things that you can do in an advertising campaign or in marketing in general is to be able to use the same language as your prospect or your customer that you're going after. For example, again, if you're a airline and you go and tell them that there's low fares, they might get it. If you go and tell them that there's cheap flights, it clicks with them a little bit differently, right? If you tell them that there is if you can speak to them, if you're going after teenagers and you can use their, their, their hip new terms that they're coming out with, that us old folks like me with my five-year-old kid who's like watching all this stuff that I don't even have a clue anymore what they're doing. Um, if you can talk to them with that language, they're going to listen to you. It was so funny, the other day he was watching this, he was watching Power Rangers or something silly like that, and there was an ad that came on TV for little pancake puffs. And you put them in this little thing, and they make little circular kind of muffin-like pancakes or whatever. And he came up to me the other day, and he's like, hey, Dad, you know that um, we can make uh, little pancake muffins? And you just have to add your favorite batter, and we can just make them. And then you can add your, your, your favorite maple syrup on top of it. And I was like, wow, this is nuts. But anyway, they were using the terminology. They weren't selling it to me. They were selling it to him, and they were using the words to him that were powerful. And to me, I was, you know, it didn't make any sense, but he's going to do it, and maybe next month we'll actually get one because of peer pressure or something. Um, but this is, 
the concept, right? And then you can reuse this, and this is one of the great things about digital media, and they touched on that a little bit earlier in the keynotes, is that you're gonna get immediate results back. If you do a Google AdWord campaign, you can get that up and running in 15 minutes and start seeing results right away. You can test your keywords, you can test your messaging, and you can turn that around and put that into your, your television ad, your radio spots, your print environments, whatever it is, and granted, while those environments might be much more difficult to track, they still have some value, but you can prove it out, that message that you're using in your online environment, because of the click-through rate, or the conversion rate, or whatever other metric that you're using to measure your digital media, you can go back out and you can use that again, um, because it's got a proven value somewhere, you can assume that it's going to have some value for you moving forward. All right. So we're going to go through. We're going to go through a step by step. Um, there's about six steps that we're going to go through to do keyword research. And this is the preliminary kind of caveat to the whole thing: that the keys to doing keyword research. First of all, I gave you. You guys have a list of uh, about ten different keyword research tools. Do not lean on them too hard. You're going to again get a little bit of a mixed message here. They are really great tools for doing what it is that they do. But the data is not 100% correct. Your own intuition does matter. Okay? You want to go out and you want to have real life experiences with everybody. You want to go talk to your customers. And these keyword tools are not going to be able to get out there and get you face to face with your customer. That's on you to do that. All right? um, and you're, it's going to give you some idea, maybe a jumping off point for building your budgets. Maybe if you have no idea whatsoever, it's a very popular question I get. It's like, how much should I allocate for budgets? Um, you know, it really depends. And this might give you a starting point. Some industries are uber competitive, and you have, might have to pay, um, you know, through the nose seemingly for certain things, um, but you're paying, you know, standard industry prices, really. Um, in other environments, you can pay maybe five cents a click or other things like that and have a very controlled, you know, $100 a month budget and get really, really great results, even for um, large firms looking at going through um, different avenues. So, but the key to the whole thing, the key to marketing, in my opinion, is this last key. Test, test, test. Start off small. If you don't know it's going to work, if you're going to do an SEO program, if you're going to do some paid advertising, whatever it is that you're going to do, it's more important to do it and to try it and to fail than it is to not to do it. But to be able to fail, you need to be able to do it in an environment that is not going to cost you your business. right? So it'd be easier, if, you, if you're in your head, you're thinking, okay, I can afford $1,500 to do this particular campaign. Great. Cut it back to maybe like $200 to do a test. That test bears itself out, and you actually make, I don't know, whatever, $1,000 off that $200 investment. You can look at that original $1,500 budget as easy, no problem. Let's do that. You can, might even start thinking about doing a $2,500 budget or whatever, how much cash it is you have on hand. If that $200 test fails, you just lost $200, but you gain, hopefully, a lot of information to do another $200 test, and eventually one of those $200 tests might take, bring you to that $2,000 level, and you'll be able to build off of that success. So testing is easily one of the most overlooked things, especially in a small business. I'm guilty of it myself. Um, just the other day, I did an email sent out to my, my uh, contacts, and I had this really great idea. It was like a really great idea. And I needed to tell everybody about it right away. So I just typed up the email, I sent that out to everybody, and as soon as I sent that out, I saw this huge error. And if I had just taken a deep breath, this, you know, what was the difference between sending it right that second and sending it two hours from now? It was psychological, that's all that it was. But if I had just taken a deep breath and just waited a second and then gone back and looked at it, I would have so I've saved myself a whole lot of time and a whole lot of pain. And that's what I'm saying about going after is testing, is wait. It's not important. If it's that important right now to do that one particular thing, then there's probably some other issues that you probably need to deal with. There's probably nothing that is going to be so important that you cannot afford to take a day or two out of that schedule to do a little bit of testing. 